Hey everybody, I'm Onashka Hernandez and I am here with Diana Liz Gallegos. Diana Liz Gallegos of Rejuvenating Lifestyle. And um, Diana, I wanted to talk to you today about a little bit about depression. I know about uh, 20 million Americans suffer from some form of depression at any given time. And, and I myself have uh, dealt with depression, long-term low-grade depression. And, and this is something that seems to touch everybody's life, either directly or indirectly. And I want you to share a little bit about um, your story around depression. Well, um, my story started probably before my birth. Uh, my mother went into, had a very difficult pregnancy because my father didn't want children. And um, she had become pregnant on the honeymoon. I was born exactly nine months after their marriage. And um, she, um, so um, we learn behaviors from our parents and we actually have uh, what are called mirror neurons, which allow us to connect. Um, when we see someone, um, a, a, the, our brain sinks in with their brain, and that's where we learn behavior. So um, I was depressed uh, in the first grade, and, but I didn't know I was depressed until uh, within the last year. And I had lived with it, as many people do. Uh, we don't, if you've never known anything else, um, you go through bouts of, of you know, it, you don't stay down all the time, but there are things that are just so difficult to do. And even though you want to do it with all your heart, you just can't bring yourself to do it. And um, I, I found myself in that position. Um, and, um, it, it, and I took steps and every step that I've taken along my life. I started counseling. Uh, I went to college for two reasons. I wanted pretty dresses because we were so very, very poor. And the only time I got a pretty dress was when I danced and once a year. And you know that met my standards of pretty dress, <laughs> tiara and sparkles and ribbons. And, and, um, and I, wanted, I started reading psychology books when I was 13. And uh, as soon as I graduated from college, I started counseling. And I started at the very beginning of what are you feeling? And, and I would look at the little faces, you know, the kind of like the, that we use on Facebook. And I would try and try and figure out what it is to connect my emotions. So I've been on this journey of studying depression my whole life and particularly uh, this last year. You said you were talking about uh, experiencing depression during childhood. Uh, and I assume a lot of children do experience depression. When did you first realize that you were experiencing depression? Uh, I, I've gone through several bouts of burnout and separating the, the body from the mind. I think that um, those bouts of, of severe burnout, I've gone through burnout three times and um, I think the burnout was um, partly real emotional situations that were really hard. Um, being physically totally exhausted, uh, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Um, and when you have such stress, you, you just, you just, your body just breaks down and can't cope. So, um, so the, I would think that those were three pits, but um, there, there's a, an underlying energy that, um, that I've lived with most of my life. And um, I've taken steps and I recognize now that the difference between me and my mother is that I have taken baby steps uh, over and over and over and again. And even though I've done that, without it ha being a conscious plan, there's holes that I occasionally slip into. I don't, does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah no, and that, and that makes a lot of sense because yeah, I think you, you, you really pointed out, how can you know something if you don't know 
know a difference. Um, and I think that's that's very interesting to, to think about that. So um, talk to me a little bit about some of the things that, that you've gone through that you have come through and, and, and how you've recognized your depression, what's worked, what uh, maybe hasn't worked, some of your journey in trying to find your way through it. Okay. Well, the first time I went through burnout, um, I was in my early 30s, um, um, and I had um, had a dance studio. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in dance, and um, my students wanted to compete, and I had no interest in, in dance competition, but um, they were consistent. And um, I was there to serve their needs, not mine. And so I said, okay, we'll take one number to competition. Well, we won first place and we didn't go to the national competition. Uh, this was, you know, you would have to qualify to go to the national. Um, so the next year I said, okay, we win next year. We'll go to the, to the national competition. And we took three numbers. And of course, all three numbers won at first place. Well, fast forward a couple of years. Um, the last year I went through to competition took 51 numbers to national competition. And um, I had become a competition machine. And um, I had um, studied, I mean, I could have, a, if I had, if you could take my level of study and commitment I would have a PhD in ballet <laughs> um, because I, I stayed in Dallas and I took, uh, I loved ballet. It just, um, just the beauty of it is just, um, and the, I just loved every moment of the, the sweat, everything, <laughs> the blisters, I loved every moment of it. And, um, but I didn't know how to deal with parents and I didn't know and what was really interesting, and it didn't make any sense at the time, but I would leave national trophies on restaurant tables. I couldn't hang on to the joy. And that's one of the, uh, of the elements of depression is that, and there's actually physical measurement that they have done. Richie Davidson at the University of Wisconsin in Madison has actually measured the left prefrontal cortex to the nucleus accumbens, that's deep side in the brain right here. And the, the connection just drops off on people who are depressed is they can't maintain that moment of joy. And that moment of joy leads to optimism. And so without optimism, you, you just flat, you, there's, there's nothing. And um, I just couldn't keep doing the, the national thing. And uh, I, I didn't know what was happening. Uh, you know, I understand it now in retrospect. So does that help? Does that answer? Well, what I want to, I guess, and yeah, it does. Absolutely. And I guess also what I'm thinking about as you were talking is what was really interesting is, is, uh, and I, and I guess there are different ways that dip depression shows up for people. Uh, but I guess what, while you were talking, I was thinking, is there an element of being a perfectionist, not good enough, always striving, making championships, but not making the mark? Is that part of, is that a telltale sign of the depression? Uh, perfectionism leads to um, um, not being able to enjoy the moment. And that's one of the reasons why mindfulness and the practice of mindfulness is so important because what happens is you have this almost perfect performance but there was this one little thing that didn't go exactly right or you know some element of the evening didn't go exactly right or something and it takes all of the joy it's kind of like you've got this great big and you got this one little tiny black dot and that little black dot takes all of your joy mm -hmm. So learning to, to, um, to hold both things, to recognize that, yes, we're human, you know, <laughs> this is pretty darn good, enjoy it, yeah. So it makes it, well, I guess when you're talking, what's really interesting, it's making me think of the, the, 
the things that the, the, the one thing that we're, we're hearing a lot about is trauma and dealing with trauma, especially childhood trauma. And that this is what it's sounding like with children who go through childhood trauma, uh, in different, whatever form it takes, um, that was, you will see, we will see the, the, the thing that's wrong versus mm -hmm. anything else. Yes. And um, childhood trauma um, pretty much leads not only to uh, emotional problems and mental problems, but also to physical problems. And of course, in my, in my understanding of is it's mind body. And um, the episodes of addiction, um, major depression, uh, early death, I mean, just the statistics are, in, are just awful uh, when it comes to childhood trauma. And I did, uh, um, having a mother that is not capable of empathy is uh, you don't have to be beaten, you don't have to be mistreated. Um, you know, my parents went through enormous efforts to provide for my education and um, you know, I had piano lessons, I had dance lessons, uh, anything I wanted to do, my parents were right there for me and made enormous sacrifices for that to happen. But without that piece of empathy, especially from your primary caretaker, there needs to be somebody in your life that um, is able to allow you to experience empathy because if you don't have empathy, you're not able to develop social intuition. You're not able to, to lock on to other people and understand what they're feeling and to be able to relate. So um, yeah, so a lot of my trauma comes from my mother's lack of empathy. Sure, sure, sure. And, and, and I think, uh, you know, all children have childhood trauma, but it does usually have to do with the primary caretakers. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things that people who do not do trauma, I mean, who do not do empathy is um, there when you have, when, you, when the moment is, is present for needing to nurture and hug and have kindness, and gentleness, um, and that, that feeling of being together of empathy, what they will do is it's like they didn't hear it ignore you they will change the subject they will walk away they will get angry at you and it just leaves you hanging unconnected so that's very very traumatic sure sure because as a child you don't know what's going on and as most as we know most children uh, blame themselves for any problem in their environment because yeah. they don't they're not capable of understanding they're not adults they don't understand the complexity of what's happening mm -hmm. But yeah, um, so you have had this long journey. Talk to us a little bit about some of the things that have, you have done to address it. You talked a little bit about going through therapy uh, because this has of course been a lifelong journey for you. But can you talk to us about some of the ways you've addressed your depression once you uh, understood that you were dealing with depression? Well, I, um, I only understood it um, 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 recently, actually. I mean, I have done lots of things to cope. Um, I've done 12 years of 12 step work. Um, I did the Landmark Forum. I don't, it's an international program for personal development. And I did Pathways. Um, I also um, have been an on and off meditator for 40 years. Uh, actually, more than that now. <laughs> and um, just always, I mean, I, the, the, I've read every self-help book that came on the market, read every psychologist, um, the psychologist du jour, you know, whoever it was, um, Jerry Jampolsky, and I mean, there's just a whole list of them um, going back to, um, can't think of all the names right this moment, but um, so reading about it and, and um, was helpful uh, in, in years in and out of psychology as my life went up and down. And um, uh, I, I actually learned empathy uh, in 2009. Wow. Yes. Wow. And so way into your adult life. 
way into my adult life. Um, I, it was something um, I didn't quite understand what was the missing piece, but I could feel a missing piece in my heart. And I had an opportunity to study um, nonviolent communication, which is when nonviolent equal, that's the name of the course, but it's actually the language of compassion. And I, I took the course at um, Unity uh, Spiritual Center in Dallas, and I carried the book with me for years. And I must have read it five, six times. And you know, there were certain pages and things underlined. The problem that I had is you do not do uh, empathy and compassion. You are empathy, empathetic. And there's, and, um, and after I did the Pathways program, I was at Molina High School talking to a teacher and there was a moment and I actually was, I was able to be empathetic. And um, it was, I mean, it was just a remarkable, and it was worth all the effort for all the years uh, to uh, have that moment. And was it know, like a door riding a bicycle, you, you learn it now, now I got it, I can do it. So was it like just a door opened up for you? Oh yeah, it just opened up uh, and, um, a way of connecting and being with people that I hadn't been able to do before. And um, I, I had, you know, I've lost a couple of friendships uh, because um, the, the one that uh, calls uh, is my friend Norma in college. And um, we were close friends and her mother was terminally ill. And I could not empathize with her and um, as many people do, she got hurt and got angry and, and I lost one of the best friends I've ever had. So yeah, uh, the price for not being empathetic is very, very high. And That's after cool. that, um, I was also um, joined a 12 step group for codependency because you can't set boundaries and be and have healthy relationships. Um, when you are depressed and when uh, you lack the skills uh, to be emotionally resilient and to be connected. And um, I've uh, spent 12 years and I have some amazing friendships now. What a difference it makes to, to, to learn the skills. So, um, so this, this happened a little bit later in your life when this, this event happened that opened your eyes or opened your heart or a door or however you want to address it. Um, but since then, how has that affected the depression? Well, I still have bouts of, of depression. And I think um, the most difficult um, depression to overcome is spiritual depression. When you feel called from, the, from your heart, from your soul to do something, and you can't answer the call. You feel stuck, you feel inadequate, you feel, um, I don't have what it takes to do this. Um, yeah, and it can be, it can be very hard. Um, shedding um, the things that protect us, that allow us to be fully present without, and so that we can connect. Um, I, um, and in 2016, I retired from being an authority. I had done, I had been a conference presenter um, just about every year. I had been, um, I, uh, the new text came out in 1999 and I was hired by the Texas uh, Education Agency to do presentations all over the state, uh, teaching teachers how to implement the so I was, you know, I was an authority on, on, on the Texas Essential Knowledges and Skills. I was an authority in cultural dance. I was, you know, um, I had awards and everything. And um, I uh, started a new venture and a new life. And so all, and I went into the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy. And the first thing I had to do, when we had to do our coaching sessions in front of our class, it was online, but we, everybody's watching and you're doing it with a, you know, a, a person who's acting as your client. 
and I did everything that you could do wrong. I did it <laughs> because I was the authority, and I had a long discussion with my my trainer, <laughs> and um, and it was so painful to let go of this protected shield of information and knowledge and to be with the person. So uh, that was another step on my journey. Yeah. So, so now you, you, this took you, so you retired and then it took you to uh, your new venture, your new program, uh, Rejuvenating Lifestyles. And, right. and I think through that, you're, you, 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 you work with people dealing with a host of issues, host. but, but, and of course there's a lot of research on that you've done, but as far as depression is concerned, what are the tools that, that you work with or, or you would recommend for people, especially well, as they go into depression and aging? Yeah. Uh, I recommend a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you need to get some good blood work done and make sure that you um, don't have issues with thyroid, um, that you, um, your vitamin D is at a good level. And uh, functional medicine rec recommends that it be on the high side um, of it, not near the low, because it's quite a large range. And some of the doctors really like it up close to 80. Um, so getting those markers um, taken, you know, and, and know that that's not the issue. Um, and then uh, working with a cognitive behavioral therapist, if you can afford it. If you can't, uh, perhaps a, a, a group for codependency um, might be helpful. And um, meditation and mindfulness. Uh, I, th I think you, you really need all three um, to make it on your journey. Meditation is about, there's so many different kinds, and um, I'm not only a functional medicine health coach, I'm also a brain healthy coach. And I went through a program with Daniel Amen, one of the foremost psychiatrists in the world. And uh, it's the most difficult thing I've ever done. And I loved every minute of it, just like I did ballet. And um, there isn't one kind of depression. There's kind, it, it doesn't, it's, it's not one size fits all. We're all unique and we're all individual. But pretty much um, learning to look at ourselves and detach, uh, separate ourselves from I am sad to I feel sad. That seems like such a, a small designation but letting go of the of holding it as as me rather and and creating a little separation and so in meditation in, in the meditation that i'm working on right now um, um we we focus on trying to see but let it be like flowing water that goes past us so that we don't attach to something and bring it to us and there was something i wanted to say oh the opposite of, of fear is not hate, it's, it's love. So when you, when you work on living from your heart and being true to your heart and being courageous, um, empowered, because the word courage comes from, uh, the, you know, it's, it's from the heart. It's, it means heart in Latin. And so, um, so the, the meditations that I'm doing are heart math, which are very simple steps that you, you take to once again shift so that you get out of the sadness into a, a momentary experience of joy. And then we try and lengthen the time and the intensity by which I will ring the chime and say, when you hear the chime, your joy will increase 10 times. And I see if we can expand on that feeling of joy. And then separating so that we don't cling and attach to the negativity, but we let it wash over us. And, um, and then building a relationship with your inner self. We, we're so outer focused in our society and everything goes so fast. Um, 
everything in our culture goes against what our body needs and what our heart needs. And, um, and it doesn't take, it doesn't have to take, you know, like the Dalai Lama and the, the Buddhist monks, you know, someone that has 10,000 hours of practice is still a novice. <laughs> no, we, we don't need that. I mean, it, it's beautiful to cultivate that skill. But with 10 minutes a day, you can make a huge difference in yourself with heart math and open heart meditation. And of course, uh, certain kinds of depression um, respond to kundalini yoga, especially kirtan kriya, which you know about. Yeah, and that's, I practice kirtan kriya every morning and every evening, in addition to the other work that I do, because I'm retired now, I can do it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, I really love what you're having to say about it. And as we're, as we're talking, you know, I really feel the passion, see the passion about this from you, the tearing up that, that this is really very close to you on lots of levels and that, that you're very connected to it, that you don't detach from this. You're, you're very connected to, to what has and is happening, well, actually to what is happening to you now in the moment as you speak about these things that, that you are are working with and going through that that it's very powerful very powerful and in your and in, in what you've developed and i love hearing what you have to say about that you know i'm wondering you know since you know you've been on this journey for a while obviously and, and you've mm -hmm. got some resources uh and you've done a lot of studying uh I, I wonder how this interconnects with some of the other work that you're doing which uh, the nutrition. Well, you know, you, you, I think one of the things that, as we've talked in the past, we're talking about depression, but what's been very interesting for me is the study you've done with depression and other issues having to do with some brain research. And, and I'm, I find that very, very fascinating. And I don't know if you want to talk about that at all. But. Well, um, yes. Um, well, uh, my, my, um, my mother started me on this journey. <laughs> And um, she uh, developed Alzheimer's. And my grandmother developed Alzheimer's. And my, my mother's brother, when we were getting ready to move her into the memory care facility, um, my sister took care of my mom for five years and her husband got transferred. And um, so we, we moved my mother my sister moved to Decatur, Texas, and I lived in Dallas. So we moved my mom to Fort Worth um, on the very uh, edge of Fort Worth where my sister could be an easy drive for her and a long drive for me. And, um, but my mother's baby brother had just passed um, from Alzheimer's and I was having major issues at work with, um, and I had, uh, moved my mother into the memory care facility in uh, January. And in April, I went into my admin's office and I said, Marilyn, I'm going to retire in four months and I need your help. I am correcting every form that I submit to you three or four times before I turn it in. And I'm sorry that there's mistakes on it. I am doing the best I can. So I was sure I had, I was in the early stages of, of, um, of Alzheimer's. And so um, I um, had my, my, my primary care doctor was transitioning into the functional medicine um, program um, to have, to be a functional medicine doctor. She was taking the courses to, uh, to, to do so. And she told me about the functional medicine coaching academy and also about the work that Dale Bredesen does. She even gave, went as far as to give me her password to allow me to attend the sessions with Dale Bredesen. Of course, that first session that I went through was, everything was way over my head. But I, you know, I caught on. And um, so I, in order to take the course with Dale Bredesen, I had to take the course, the fun, be a functional medicine coach first in order to, so I did, the, I, you know, um, I was uh, enrolled immediately, and uh, 
um, and studied a lot of the leading doctors, um, particularly the work of David Perlmutter, and, um, and then um, did the Bredesen course. And while I was taking the Bredesen course, I, I knew that I had to have a cognitive test. Well, what showed up was ADD. Oh, wow. Uh, undiagnosed ADD my entire life. Wow. And um, so I... Um, um, had, I, I had an opportunity um, at the Restore Wellness Center under Dr. Patterson, and uh, he, he did the neuro tests, and um, it turns out that ADD gets worse in women after menopause. I didn't know, wow. Yeah, and yes, and so, um, so I uh, had an opportunity to take the Amen course, and it was the godsend. And so I took, I signed up, and after I was in the course for about <laughs> four weeks, <laughs> I said, you know, I think I need to be tested. <laughs> I mean, to really go the full route. And so I opened up American Airlines, <laughs> And I, I called, um, you know, the Amen Clinic, and I said, okay, when can I come? <laughs> and um, I went and was tested, and that's when we found the depression. Yes, I did have ADD, but I also had deep limbic depression. And medication does not work well for it. And so I had the motivation uh, to take uh, what the doctor um, recommended, was um, it was meditation and uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, and uh, so I, you know, I just made a commitment um, that uh, I was going to learn everything I could about meditation, and uh, not only for myself but to share with others because people need to know, um, and and people don't need to need, need to go through what I went through. Yeah. Wow, that's so that's fascinating. Well, you know, Diana, we're gonna come to an end of our time. What is it? Is there anything you want to leave us with? We've covered some things. I know you have a wealth of information about Alzheimer's, and yeah. I do want to talk with you more about that. But I want to come back to depression again. So, um, is there anything you want to leave us with with depression? I think that you. Um, yeah. Start. The dep the way you beat depression is with three skills, emotional resilience. You learn to bounce back. You learn how to not stay stuck and hurt. My mother died with the same little pains she'd had her whole life. She couldn't let them go. Um, um, learning social intuition, and that you do that with uh, uh, loving kindness meditation and opening your heart and, um, and, and optimism uh, and, and holding on to joy. These, these are little things that you can consciously try and attach to. And the brain that we have as a, as a baby, you know, the brain that we have when we're 12, when we're 18, is not the brain. We know today that the brain is malleable. You can change it. And with little steps of, and determination, that you want to be happy, that you want it to end, you can do it. And uh, if there's anything that I, my meditations are offered every Wednesday from 5.30 to 6.30 Central Standard Time, and they're free. And we're, we're I'm going to continue, I'm, I, I will, right now we're focusing on the heart, but we're going to switch to mindfulness because that's another critical skill. Um, in, in developing the, the emotional resilience, the social intuition, and the optimism. And um, so, uh, and if I can help with a coaching session, I'm here. Well, thank you. We've been speaking with Diana Liz Gallegos. She is with uh, Rejuvenating Lifestyles. If you'd like to contact her, look at the link below.